Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr B is going to be looking at coordinates, working with them, plotting with them, and understanding them. This is a skill that comes up in a range of things, so it's really important you know it well. There are 15 examples here done at three different levels, and you can use the pinned comment to jump between the levels, to go faster if you feel like you need to, or to go slower if that's what you need. There is no pressure, there is no one watching you as you use this video. Now, if you want more questions, if you want workbook questions, if you want online multiple choice questions, there are thousands waiting for you over on my website. Have a look at coordinates, and there are two main things that we need to know about coordinates. So let's have a look at our graph. So, the first thing is that you have something called an x axis. Now, if you look at the arrow, the x axis is how far across something is and we can label how far across something is by using numbers so if something's all the way on the left we can call it zero and if it's all the way on the right then we can call it 10 and then we have all the numbers in between so one two three four if it's in the middle we can call it five six seven eight and nine and then you'll notice that there's an arrow pointing towards the right so we could have 11 12 13 and going onwards but these graphs are always limited we can't draw a graph that goes on forever so we have to stop somewhere but the arrow just shows us it does continue onwards the second thing that a coordinate needs is how far upwards it goes and we show that with what we call a y-axis and that's how far up something is now again we're right at the bottom then we describe it using zero if right at the top we would describe the number using a 10 and we have all the numbers in between so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and again the arrow points up we could have 11 12 13 but we have to cut our graph off somewhere so this is called the y axis how far upwards you are and going across we have the x axis you'll almost always see it labeled using y and x's i can't say i've seen it used anywhere differently and the only other thing you might see is a z which is for 3d coordinates but that isn't on gcse now looking at our questions we want to label a coordinate and it's got in brackets a six and a six now what this means is the first number is referring to the x axis and the second number is referring to the y axis so you just look at the numbers one at a time so we're starting off with six for x so we start in the bottom corner where you can see the two zeros and since our first one is on the x-axis we're going to go across and find x find six on the x-axis once you find six on the x-axis then your second number is y now that is a six so then you look at your y-axis and you go up six places and the coordinate should be well, i'm just drawing a little blue circle on the graph. So if you look below the blue dot, you'll see a green six for the X axis. And if you look to the left of the dot, you'll see a pink six for the Y axis. Now I'm going to write all the answers on the same graph. So I'm going to get to the letter so we can tell it's different to all the other ones. So I'm going to call this coordinate A. And I'll just label A underneath, well, next to six six in the questions. So I know what I found. Moving on, we need to label the coordinate three one again the first number three is where across we're going three places across and the second number one is referring to the y-axis and that's how far up we are going so you get your graph and you find three on the x-axis and you go up one place to find one on the y-axis have a look at where i'm drawing the blue dot and again to check below the blue dot we have three for the x-axis and to the left of it we have one for the y-axis let's label this one b and that's our answer so i'm just going to label all these with letters so let's just draw those out ahead of time so looking at question three we want the coordinate two one so 
again, x-axis would be the first number and y-axis would be the second number. Now, a common way to remember this is along the corridor and up the stairs. A little rhyme to remember it, you go along the corridor, you're moving along the x-axis, you're moving across, you're on the same level. And if you're going up the stairs, then you're moving upwards, you're moving on the y-axis, you're moving up a level. So along the corridor, up the stairs, we're going along the corridor from zero, zero, two places, and then we're going one place upwards, and I'm drawing a dot where the answer is. And again, just double check, we have a two below in green for the x-axis, and a one to the left in pink for the y-axis. Let's label that C. Question four, again, nine for the x-axis, and we have zero for the y-axis. So along nine and up zero, and I'm drawing the dot word. And you can have answers that are exactly on the line, on the axes. And these will always have a zero as one of the coordinates. So if you have a zero for the y-axis, you're actually on the x-axis, which might be the opposite way around to what you expect. And that's D. Again, looking down, we've got the green nine right there. And looking across, it's on the same level as the pink zero. Now for the final question, six, four. So the x-axis is six. The y-axis is 4. So starting at 0, 0, going across 6, 6 places to the right, and then up 4, 4 places upwards, and there is our coordinate. Let's label that with an E. Always check your answer at the end, so I can see I've got the green 6 underneath, and the pink 4 to the left, so I'm definitely on 6, 4. Now, the most common mistake students make here is getting X and Y the wrong way around. You just have to remember which way around they are. Always remember that X is first, and again, along the corridor and up the stairs is a good way to remember that going along X axis is first, and then going up the Y axis is second. Moving on to the medium questions. Now, question one looks like it's exactly the same as the first question. The easy questions label the coordinate 6, 6, but you'll see that the graph looks very different. We're with negative numbers. So let's look at the X axis. So the X axis is going along the middle this time, like this. And also, it goes into the negative numbers. So you will also go backwards along the X axis like so. Now we can see that we've got all the graph marks in between which will represent all the numbers. Now the thing with the numbers here is that at the end of the line on the right we are reaching 10 and on the right we are reaching negative 10. So in the middle we have 0. So let's do that one more time. We have 10 on the right hand side. We have negative 10 on the left hand side and we have 0 in the middle. Now I could label the one, two, three, four, five in between, but there's not a lot of space, but all you have to do is just count one to the right to go to positive numbers and one to the left to go to negative numbers. Now it's exactly the same thing for the y-axis. So with a y-axis you can go up and you can also go down. So the center point is zero, zero, where zero is. So right at the very top we have 10, right at the very bottom we have negative 10 and right in the middle we have zero. So again at the top we're going all the way up to positive 10 and at the bottom going all the way to negative 10. Zero's in the middle and then for all the numbers in between you go upwards for one, two, three, four and you go downwards for negative one, negative two, negative three and so on. So we have positive and negative numbers for the x-axis going from left to right this time and we have positive and negative numbers for the y-axis going up and down this time. On the previous graph you couldn't go down and you couldn't go left but now you can. So when we're labeling the coordinate six, six, it's going to work exactly the same way with the easy questions. The first number is for the x-axis and the second number is for the y-axis. So along the corridor and 6, 6. This time you start right in the very centre, which is where 0, 0 is. We're going to go 6 along and I'm going to go 6 up and I'm going to draw a dot where that point is. And checking our answers with this, we haven't written the numbers on now, so we're just going to have to count one more time. So you're going to count all the lines going to the right. So I'll do that in a different colour for a bit of working out. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can see that we have gone six places to the right, 
and then checking we went up six places one two three four five six so we've gone six places upwards six places to the right so we have our coordinate now i'm just going to label that so let's label that we had a b c d and e for the last set of questions let's label this f go right in a little left show where it is and again i'm gonna put all the coordinates on this one graph now so moving on to the rest of the questions we're going to label these g h i and j question two it's going to work the same way it's the first letter's coordinate how far across we're going and the second letter is the y coordinate how far up we're going so we're going to go two spaces to the right and eight spaces upwards and you should get a coordinate which is about here and let's label that G. Now to double check that's the right place it should be two spaces across so let's label that so we've got one space two spaces across we can see G is right above and it should be eight spaces up so one two three four five six seven eight and we can see that G is also eight spaces up. So we've got it in the correct place. So we've looked at the positive numbers. Now let's look at some negative numbers. So for question three, we've got negative three for X. So rather than going three places to the right, we'll now be going three places to the left. And we have a negative five for Y. So we're not going to go five up. We're going to go five downwards. So again, starting in the middle, we're going to go three places to the left one two three and five places down one two three four five and the answer should be we're making it on the graph now and let's label that h again let's check our answer so it should be going three places across so one two three places and we can see that h is directly underneath there and it should be five spaces downwards so one two three four five and we can see it's also five places down so we've got H in the correct place. Now with I and J, we've got a mix of positive and negative numbers. So for I, we're going 10 places to the left and we're going seven places upwards. So let's do that. Start right in the very middle at zero, zero. And we're going to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten places to the left and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places upwards. And I'm just drawing a dot where I found that location. And I'll label that with an I. Again, let's just double check that. So let's count 10 places to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're all the way at the end because now it's a 10 by 10 grid. So there it is. And then going upwards, we've got one two three four five six seven and we can see it's even with seven places upwards so we've got the correct answer so for j we're going four spaces to the right and we're going ten spaces downwards so i'm just going to count that up so we'll start in the middle one two three four to the right and then ten down so i'll be all the way at the bottom because it's a ten by ten grid and I'll label J down there. I'm just double checking that. Now, I don't need to bother checking the negative 10. We know that's going to be right at the bottom. But what about the 4? So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the right. And we can see that J is directly underneath. So we know we've got the correct answer. Moving on to the hard questions now. And we have some fractions involved. But it's going to work the same way. So the first coordinate is always going to be the number on the x-axis. And the second coordinate is always going to be the number on the y-axis. So this time, for the x, I'm going to count across two and a half. Now, one little thing that might help you here is doing a little key. Now, in the key, I'm going to do a perv bracket. And it's just one way to help remember which way around we're going. So in the first place, the brackets with a left and a right. And that's just reminding us that in your first number, you're going to get your left and right. And I'm going to put a little plus on the right and a minus on the left so I know where the positive and negative numbers leave us. Then for the second number, I'm going to do a little arrow going up and down. Just reminds the second number is going up or down with a plus at the top and a minus at the bottom, just to remind me of which way around the plus and minus is going to be. So when we're saying two and a half, that's a positive number. So we're going to the right, I'm going to count two full spaces across and then half a space across. And I'll just label that on the axis. 
Then for the y axis, we're going up hole six. So count up six one, two, three, four, five, six, and then label that. And again, I've been starting labeling from the center. It is where those two marks cross, which would be here. And be careful to put it in the middle of the squares to represent the half. Now, I'm going to label all of these again. I go up to J with the last set of questions. So let's start labeling with K. So I'll label a K next to that coordinate. So the little marks, you can draw in pencils. So we can rub those out. And then we can move on to question two. So we have a negative one and two thirds. That'll be our X axis number. And it's negative. So we're going to the left. And then we have zero for the y axis number, so we don't need to move on the y axis. And we'll label this one L. Oh, one to the left, and then we're going to go two thirds. It's not going to be quite in the middle, it's going to be a little bit after the middle. And then it's going to be zero up, so that is where we're going to have to leave our mark. So if you're working out in pencil there, we can now use pen to draw this properly. So it's going to be around about there. And I'll label that with an L. So we'll have M, N, and then O. Now, I don't really want to label O because O can be used to represent the middle of the graph. So O stands for origin. And I've just labeled it on the graph there. It represents 0, 0. So I'm not going to use O for letters to label. So let's use P. So let's move on to question 3. So we have our X axis, 8 and a third. We have our Y axis, 7 and 1 third. So the X value, we know that we're going 8 to the right. It's a positive number, looking at our key. And then another third afterwards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a third. Just mark on the graph roughly where that would be. And then for the y axis, we know it's seven and a third. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a little bit above seven for a third. And where those two marks intersect is where we can do our dot to represent those coordinates. Being careful not to be on the intersection of the lines because that'll show whole numbers. And let's label it with an M. Moving on to question four. So we have five and a third will be the x axis. And negative five and two thirds would be the y axis. So starting at O, the origin in the middle of the graph, zero, zero. I'm going to go five and a third to the left because it's a positive number. One, two, three, four, five, and then a little bit more. And then five and two thirds down, that's a negative number for the y axis, so it's going downwards. One, two, three, four, five. And then just before six, I'll leave my mark. It's going to be around about here. And we'll label that with an N. Now, moving on to question five. So again, we've got an X and Y axis. We have five for the X axis. And we have positive one third for the Y axis. So we're going to go five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then a third should be a little bit above. So we should be around about here. I'm going to label that with a P. So there are all my points labeled. And again, a reminder that O represents zero, zero usually. Something I see C for center as well, but O is the most common way of labeling the center. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.